my problems started in 97 January um, with a with a voice. His name was Sid. He was very spiritual, mm-hmm. and uh, basically I just come out of hospital with a gangrenous ruptured appendix, and uh, I'd had one infection after another, and I've been okay by the doctor, all clear, go back to work. Mm. But uh, Sid come to me one day and uh, said, "You still got an infection? Get a second opinion." So I did, and uh, I still have an infection. Mm-hmm. So that kind of uh, built a, a trust between me and this this voice. Um, when I first heard it, I, I was I was shocked. Yeah. Because it wasn't the, the norm. Mm. If you if you know what I mean, but I didn't tell anyone. I think one day it just changed. And uh, I was driving home at night. It was about two thirty in the morning. Yeah. Uh, after a long drive, so I worked in Swindon. Mm. And uh, it said, "I'm going to kill you painfully and slow." And after that, it, everything started to change. Yeah. With this voice, and it was there constantly, uh, running me down, and um, generally being abusive, and being that uh, I got this voice, mm-hmm. and he put me straight away onto uh, the mental health. Um, unit yeah. in my hometown and uh, how did you find that experience We're very stressful yes yes very stressful into most street about four years now so it was about three years after that the dynamic voice hit me yes and I didn't know there was a group that existed for hearing voices yes I hadn't been told um, although to be fair I didn't tell my CPN or my psychiatrist an awful lot I kept them in the dark mm. about a lot of things mm. But coming to Milson Street was absolutely fantastic, the Hearing Voices group. Mm. They welcomed me with open arms. Mm. And um, I wasn't surprised, but uh, it was, although it's not the right word to say nice to know that other people were suffering like I had, it mm. was, um, a, a, there was no surprise element. When I talked about my story, they said, oh yeah, I've been through that. Mm. And yet they were still living today kind of thing. I think hearing other people's stories does help. Yeah. Oh, it helps immensely, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Come through it. Yeah. At the time, it seems absolutely devastating, which it is. Mm. But uh, she's been very supportive, although she's, she says to me, uh, I'm not really your carer because um, she's got the, well, I've got four children as well. Right. So she looks after the children and she says that I'm her fifth child, so. How would you describe your relationship? It's very Chris. good. It's, it's very. We've got a very sound, sound relationship. And how would you describe your relationship with your your children? Yeah, very, very good with my um, old. Do you feel as though you're you're more developed in in those particular areas than you were, say, seven years ago, or even further yeah. back? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would. Yeah. What do you put that down to? Be being able to sit back and think, mm. and. Um, just, just I think it, it comes with um, age as well. Experience. You, you, yeah, you reflect yeah. on mm. on things that you've done wrong in the past, and and um, I say the children have had a massive impact. They really are. Well, kids can that. be quite a reality check, can't yeah, they? Yeah, um, they certainly ask a lot of questions about they do. themselves. I read a book called Schizophrenia Defeated, which was about um, a very Christian man who, um, so say defeated schizophrenia through the power of prayer mm-hmm. and meditation. Mm-hmm. And I, I found that reading his book very enlightening. So I don't like being on meds, I must admit I have trouble taking them. Mm. Not physically mm. trouble, but mm. but I've been told I'll, I'll most likely be on them for the rest of my life, which is... Mm. Um, is that a difficult concept to mm, take in? It is a difficult concept. Also, there's... Um, I'm a insulin-dependent diabetic, mm. which I believe was directly caused through the spirit of Although right. they don't tell you that there was right. um, there was uh, a link. There was uh, a long time in my life when I just didn't want to live. Mm. Uh, I had one suicide attempt. When was that? Uh, that would have been two thousand and three. Uh, a very low part of my life. And I don't know what kicked it. Well, I do know what kicked it off. I stopped taking the respirator. Yes. I told no one. Went along quite happily for. For about three weeks, mm. then my mood started to heighten, mm. and it just kept going up and up and up. Mm. So till I hit mania, and then one day I thought, um, I'm not going to get any higher than what I am now. Mm. I'm only going to come down and, mm. and hit rock bottom.
Yeah. So I decided to take an overdose. And what kind of impact did that have on the family? Big impact. Yeah. Uh, it still has um, an impact now in the sense of um, not not so much now, but the first couple of months they wanted to know where I was going, where where I'd been. Mm. I was never left alone. There was always somebody trailing me, if you know what I mean. Sure. So. Does that still happen? Occasionally, yeah. Mm. When uh, when things aren't going right for me, my wife senses it, and mm. oh, I'm going out for a walk with the dogs, and she said, "Well, oh, take take Elliot with me, my oldest." Mm. Mm. Family, and are you learning new things and learning new skills too? I'm not a very good communicator. Okay. In the sense of with family, I tend mm. to um, be a bit quiet. But my my oldest two children, they belong to the young carers group. Yeah. And they find that absolutely uh, fantastic. So. Mm. They, they know they know what's wrong with me. I think you take responsibility for all your change now as opposed to what was happening say three years ago or even later on in that. I think I think I've I have to take responsibility for change whatever period of my life was. Mm. But you think you're more aware of it now than you were? Definitely yeah. yeah. More aware of change now. And yeah. um, what do you put that down to? What do you maybe there are lots of things you put it down to, <clears> but what what do you think has caused you to kind of make that shift, which is quite significant, isn't it? It is. Wellness, feeling well, mm. is, a big, um, is a big bonus. And what do you put wellness down to? Could be medication. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a number of factors. could be the time of year. I say I love this time of year when the sun yeah. comes out. It's just so, it could be the spiritual um, searching. Mm. Oh, right. Any other issues you want to discuss briefly? Sue, that's the same question for you as well. Uh, for me, I'm really sort of interested in how the Hearing Voices group's been able to mm. support you. I mean, maybe, I know we've got limited time, that's probably something... Just just them about. listening and uh, having an understanding where you think your own story is unique, when it's not really. It's um, It may be slightly different, but there's always a, a, an underlying factor that's going back to the empathy again that people can truly yeah. empathise with. Yeah, and it's not feeling uh, left out, it's feeling a, a part of um, something that's really good. Yeah, I don't know what I would have done without the hearing voices. Mm. I would probably still be wandering around now with, um, with not an understanding or all that in my head where they brought, uh, they brought light into my world, they really did. That's a really positive note to end on. Mm. And I'd like to thank you very much for participating in this very brief session. Thank you very much. Thank you, John.